Days Gone is the latest addition to Sony's long lineup of high quality exclusive titles. Developed from Ben Studios, which for well over a decade now has been primarily been focusing on creating portable games and hasn't made a console game since 2004, and now making the transition back to console games was certainly meant to bring its own set of challenges. And though the game is not perfect and certainly has a number of issues, it didn't however harm too much my overall experience and enjoyment that I had while playing through one of the longest and most ambitious attempts at the zombie genre game that I've played in some time. The majority of Days Gone's plot takes place in the forest region of Oregon and follows the main protagonist Deacon St. John, who is a former soldier slash biker who managed to survive the early days of the virus outbreak that infected a large portion of humanity, causing them to go extremely violent. After supposedly saving his wife Sarah, who Deacon believed to have eventually have died, and escaping with his friend Boozer, Deacon spends the next two years as a freelance bounty hunter or Drifter, as he is called, and rides from camp to camp simply trying to survive in an area that has now become completely overrun with what are now called Freakers. Civilization has nearly collapsed since the virus outbreak happened, and since then, the remains of what is left of the uninfected have retreated to small camps and bases spread throughout the land. But one day, while Deacon is out exploring the area, he happens to come across a helicopter belonging to the organization called Nero, or National Emergency Restoration Organization, Deacon manages to get in contact with the very person who helped his wife Sarah escape, and now rejuvenated with a new sense of hope that his wife Sarah may still be alive, Deacon is determined now more than ever to do anything and travel anywhere to discover the truth. Now with the game's main campaign being as lengthy as stated to be at least 30 hours in total, there is certainly an issue story-wise with the pacing, and for a large portion of the game, it is very directionless with the player not having a clear idea of what exactly is going on until the halfway mark. And until that happens, the first half, at least for me, was carried entirely on the back of its cast of characters, with the main lead Deacon being the main driving force. Sam Whitworth's performance as Deacon was absolutely incredible, as he was able to bring out several different sides of Deacon's character and shows him to be a very broken down person who has been forced to adapt to a new world where one must be willing to do anything in order to survive. And because of this, this causes Deacon to have to do and say many things that one would not expect from a main protagonist. Deacon as a character is as far from a goody-good protagonist as one character can be, and when the moment comes, he can certainly present a far more darker and even vengeful side of his personality when the moment calls for it. The rest of the cast of characters all do a wonderful job of the amount of time that they are given, and I can tell you this, that no one here phones in their performances, and I can promise you even farther that a majority of the characters that you will encounter all have their own unique backstories to tell, with each character having plenty of time to develop themselves and become fully realized, and it ultimately fills the lengthy amount of runtime that the campaign provides. Now the gameplay style for Days Gone has been classified as an action-adventure survival horror game set in a post-apocalyptic open world played from a third person's perspective. Now there's a lot of things to do outside of the main story, but for the mass majority of your time in Days Gone will be spent riding your motorcycle and in a way it can be considered your most important tool in the game. It is your primary means of transportation it is your best means of escape should you find yourself in a tricky situation, and it also makes you a target for enemies of all varieties. Now, As you progress through the game, your bike can be upgraded with all kinds of unique parts, both visually and performance wise, and when it comes to performance, many improvements will make your bike much more capable of maneuvering through the rough terrains that you will explore. And it's not just the terrain that you will have to worry about, but also the weather, as the rain and snow can make your bike much harder to control. You will also need to maintain the condition of your bike as it can become damaged over time and you will also need to keep an eye on your gas tank to travel. You can also use your bike to fast travel from point to point but you can only travel as far as the amount of gas that you have can take you. Deacon himself can also level up over time and gain skill points that can then be used to improve certain traits of Deacon's physical performance both for survival and during combat. You also have the ability to collect resources that can then be used to craft unique melee weapons and even health packs to recover from damage along with crafting unique throwing weapons like pipe bombs that you can use against your enemies. Speaking of enemies, the enemy variety in Days Gone is quite expansive, 
and not only will you have to deal with small collections of different freakers spread throughout the lands, but you will eventually find yourself coming in contact with a large group of freakers called hordes that are comprised of hundreds of freakers all moving as one to create a visually impressive sight, as well as providing a serious challenge to engage or even escape from. The virus not only infected humans, but the wildlife itself, as you will also find yourself fighting against infected bears, wolves, and even birds. However, those infected are not the only threats you will have to deal with, as you will find yourself fighting off against marauders who want to kill you and take your stuff, along with a group of crazed individuals called rippers who seek to recruit civilians into their ranks. When it comes to improving your equipment, you can buy better equipment from the multiple camps and bases that you will visit, as each different base has their own unique different forms of equipment that you can purchase. As your trust level with each camp increases, it will grant you access to better improvements for both your weapon and your bike. Now, in order to increase your trust level with each camp and base that you visit, you must complete a series of missions. And this is where the primary issue that I have with the gameplay lies. For the mass majority of the missions throughout Days Gone, no matter what camp or base you are visiting, you will have to repeat the same two or three objectives. You will either be asked to hunt down and kill a certain individual, clear a specific camp or area of enemies, or recover a specific item. None of these progress the story in any way, and though there are certainly some missions that are important and actually move the story forward, you have to complete five or six of these repetitive, meaningless missions before you actually get a unique mission that actually has some depth, and therefore it made me feel like these useless missions were simply placed here to make the game longer than it needed to be. Now visually, Days Gone is an absolutely gorgeous game to look at, with such attention to detail added to just about every environment you will encounter, and no two locations will ever look completely identical to each other, and there's plenty of different areas to explore, which grants Days Gone a good amount of variety, which is made even more impressive when you take into effect the night and day system into effect, along with the multiple different weather conditions that you will encounter. The soundtrack is also very well handled with a number of key moments both emotional as well as suspenseful being enhanced by the background music. Every character looks as you would expect for a game of this quality, and apart from some loading screen issues, this game ran pretty smoothly. However, I did happen to encounter a number of major technical issues throughout my playthrough, and though I believe that by the time of this review a number of them have been fixed with patches, that didn't prevent them from appearing through my personal playthrough, and some of them even got so bad that it even got me killed on a multiple of occasions. Now I personally really enjoyed playing Days Gone and think that it is another solid addition to the great lineup of PlayStation exclusive titles that we have gotten this generation. Now would I place up there with the Elite games like a God of War 4 or Horizon Zero Dawn or even a Spider-Man? No, it's, it's nowhere near that good. But it does succeed in giving us a very unique experience that has its own unique taste and gives it its own unique identity and a very, in my opinion, bloated genre in terms of the zombie survival horror aspect of games that we've been getting lately. Now, this game is by no means perfect, and it does have its number of flaws, but it is by no means deserving of these horrible and, in my opinion, biased reviews from these so-called professional reviewers, because had they actually given this game a chance and actually played through it fully, which I can tell some of them clearly didn't, then I think that they would give this game really some serious credit for being able to pull off what it was able to do with a studio with a certain background that they have. Now, do I think that this game is deserving of a sequel? Absolutely. I think it did a phenomenal job of establishing a great cast of characters, giving us an amazing environment, and at least giving us a solid cliffhanger that really wants me to know exactly what the next chapter is going to be. And heck, if this game could pull this off in PlayStation 4, then I can only imagine what a sequel to Days Gone would be in PlayStation 5, and think that is something that we all can enjoy. Now, if I had to give this game a rating, sadly, I think at worst, I would give it a 7.5. This is certainly something I think you should own. I would not recommend you spend collector's edition money on this game as I because I certainly regret doing so, but this is something I think everyone who owns PlayStation 4 should eventually pick up and add to their library of games. So that is my review of Days Gone. Now if you happen to have played this game, I really would like to know what were your thoughts. 
Share your thoughts and experiences with me and everyone else in the comments down below. And if you could, I would really appreciate if you could press the subscribe button and press the like button to share this on all your social media outlets to help spread and grow the channel. And you can also press one of the links in the description down below so you can follow me on Twitter or friend me on Facebook to keep track of my future videos. And like always, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. You're awesome. And I will see you next time.